Hey everyone, welcome to part four of the Space Scene tutorial. Be sure to watch this entire video as I'm gonna give you several tips and tricks on how to use Blender throughout the entire tutorial. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I post a tutorial. I'm uh, posting a lot of tutorials and other content right now. I've been doing some uh, unboxing videos because that's just also something I'm kind of into right now. And um, uh, especially if you guys are interested in that, you might go check those out as well. Also, as a reminder, um, this is part four of the series, so um, you will need to complete parts one, two, and three, which will be in the description of this video, uh, in order to um, have all the assets you need for this video. I mean, you also could just use this video as a way to learn how to uh, put an object on a path, like you know, a ship or a um, vehicle or anything like that, that you want to follow a path, a certain path and everything. I'm also gonna show you how to track it with a camera, which will um, be really fun. So anyway, so let's get started. So right here, we're picking up from part three. Um, with the, uh, we have the shuttle right here in the middle, really small next to the space station, which is you know pretty massive. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the shuttle and the space station. We're gonna hit Control C to copy, and we're gonna open up our tutorial where we built the, the Earth. Don't save, don't wanna modify that. So here we are in our um, part one tutorial. Um, this is this is everything you should have from uh, part one. Let's just go ahead and just turn on um, render preview. Okay, so we have our earth, looks beautiful, everything looks great. Um, this should be the way we left it after uh, part one of the tutorial. Um, we're gonna go to wireframe and we're gonna hit control V. That pastes in our space station and our shuttle. Um, let's go ahead and look down our Z axis and zoom out a bunch. Um, what we need to do real quick is uh, click this arrow right here and we need to go to view and set our end to 3000 So that way we can see this cube right here This is basically kind of a kind of a set bounding box based on the uh, volumetric shader that we created It's just basically a big cube that has a volumetric shader that just kind of gives the outer space a little bit of a haze a little more dramatic effect on that note uh, let's go ahead and make sure and turn off everything that we're not using right now. Um, the uh, shell and space station are so, still selected because we just pasted them in. Um, let's go ahead and deselect everything and we're just going to select the space station. We're going to hit G, drag it down here a bit just uh, freely. Uh, look kind of along the Y axis. Hit S to scale. Let's bring it down in size. Just kind of in this little quadrant right here. Going to look down our X axis. Going to rotate it on the x-axis, hit R and X to rotate. Hit G, bring it up a bit. Just kind of raise up above this, the uh, the Earth. And I know that this space station, there's no way it could be the same size as the Earth, but um, this is just more for uh, dramatic effect and feel and everything. Uh, um, if you want actual scale, uh, um, it'd be a little bit harder to work with. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to start kind of prepping everything to have it ready for uh, animation. So for that, we're going to go ahead and turn off the atmosphere, the clouds for the planet, and the Earth itself. And we zoom in here. We can see our space shuttle here, just kind of floating up above the, uh, the center point of the composition. Let's go ahead and go up here to item with the shuttle selected and change the z-axis to zero so that right now the shuttle is just basically sitting right here on the center point of the entire composition right on top of the 3d cursor um, and let's go ahead and hit shift a and let's go to empty plane axis um, hit s to scale doesn't matter how big you make this thing i mean you can make it as big as you want and what we want to do is we're going to change the name from empty to camera target and then we're going to hold shift and select the shuttle and we're going to hit control p and parent that so basically right now if we select the shuttle and hit g it moves this uh, target along with it hit escape undo that um i mean undo uh, moving it around i mean make sure the cross is still parented to the shuttle and what we're going to do now is zoom out quite a bit hit shift a we're going to go to to we're going to go to curve bezier or bezier however you want to pronounce it it has to scale and hit nine 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 Let's hit nine three times so we scale up really big gonna hit z look down our z axis zoom out and scale it down just a bit and rotate along the z axis this doesn't have to be exact for right now um let's also just turn our atmosphere our clouds and the earth back on Basically what we're doing right now is we're setting the flight path for our shuttle. 
uh, with this Bezier curve still selected, let's hit G and just kind of move it down, scale it a little bit, rotate Z-axis, hit G again, scale, just kind of where this point right here, this is going to be the start point of the flight path, and this right here is going to be the end point. Um, and on that note, let's hit Tab to go into edit mode for the uh, this path right here, this Bezier curve right here. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can see the directional arrows for it. So if you don't if you don't automatically see the directional arrows, go over here to our show overlays, click the down arrow, go all the way down to the bottom, and click the checkbox next to normals. Bingo. We can see our arrows. Um, I can scale them down a little bit. That's a little, little excessive. But make sure these arrows are running along this curve and pointing towards the space station. We're going to fine tune this here in a second. So what we're going to do is let's go to our x-axis. We're going to leave this point right here for right now. We're going to select this point right here. Hit G. Bring it up towards the space station. Hit Z. Look down the z-axis. With this point still selected, hit G. And real quick, let's go up here to our transformation orientation. Go from normal to global if it's not already selected that. Okay, we're going to hit R to rotate, z-axis. And holding control, I'm just holding control to kind of snap this into place. Make it to where it's pointing directly at the space station. We're actually going to hit G and kind of bring it inside a bit. And then I'm going to go down to this point. Whoops, looks like I I'm reset back to my z-axis. Whoops. Okay, z-axis. Make sure you're still on your, looking down your z-axis. Select this point right here. This is the start point, as I said. Hit R to rotate, z-axis. Okay, if we just kind of look around in a 3D rotation mode, looks good. We got a nice flight path from the uh, from the Earth to the space station. Okay, looking good. Now what we need to do is we need to tether the shuttle to the flight path. And the way we do that is uh, the first thing we do is we need to do some uh, prep on the flight path. What we're going to do is hit Shift S and select cursor to selected. That aligns the 3D cursor to this point right here and then hit tab to go back to object mode. Right click, set origin and set origin to 3D cursor. All right, so now the origin of this line is set to the 3D cursor to the beginning of this path. Uh, make sure it is not at the space station because that's not gonna work the way we want it to. Okay. The fly path is set, so what we need to do now is we need to set the shuttle to where it will align to this path. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our shuttle. Oh yeah, forgot we need to, we need to make sure our uh, atmosphere and everything. Let's see, Earth is still selectable. We need to turn that off. Right now, just the only the Bezier curve and the shuttle in the space station should be a, should be selectable. Zoom in a bit, just get a little closer here. All right, so with our shuttle selected. Let's go to our constraints and add object constraint, relationship, follow path. And you can either use the eyedropper tool, as you see, when we bring the eyedropper tool over the path, it um, automatically detects it. You can always also select this little box right here and it will show the Bezier curve. What we need to do is uh, we need to start doing some keyframing. So now that we have it snapped to the path, uh, let's go to fixed position, check that box right there. With uh, fixed position set, um, the off we need to go to our offset factor. And if you notice, if we drag this, the shuttle moves. The offset factor has uh, values of zero and one. Right now, it's at zero. And if you'll notice when we pan around here, if we drag it from zero to one, it makes the shuttle go to the space station along our defined path. So what we need to do is. We're at frame one, we're at a 250 frame animation. Um, we're gonna keyframe at zero, and then we're gonna drag the slider all the way down here. Make sure our keyframes are not selected by deselecting them. Just kind of left click right here in the timeline. And what we need to do is um, drag the offset factor all the way to one, or you can just type in one there, and keyframe again. So if you notice, go to frame one, hit spacebar to animate, and there goes our shuttle. Now the only problem is, is it's kind of doing the Tokyo Drift there. 
uh, which is not the effect we want. I mean, unless you want your shell to do the Tokyo Drift, that's totally fine, but um, not, not in this instance. So we're going to stop our animation, hit spacebar. What we need to do is select follow curve. The only problem is now our shell is going to be backing up towards the space station. And again, that might be the effect you want, but not in this instance. So we're going to hit spacebar, bring it back. What we want to do is go to forward axis and we want to change it to negative Y. And now, as you can see, our shuttle is following the path. Looking good. Let's select our curve. Go down here to our object data properties. And uh, let's change our resolution preview to, let's change it to 48. As you can see, that makes our curve a lot smoother, looks nicer. And when we hit spacebar, the shuttle, you know, follows the path a lot, you know, it has a more natural, I guess, uh, trajectory or pathway or whatever you want to call it. Um, so basically, that's the hardest part of this tutorial. So if you made it this far, great job, guys. Um, you know, if you if you need to go back and uh, you know kind of go through this, but we're going to keep going here. What we're going to do now is uh, we need to set up a camera to get our nice uh, cinematic look to this video. Um, so what we're going to do is let's see. I'm just going to kind of manually move the camera up here, the the viewpoint. I'm sorry. Zoom out a bit. And we do have a camera that's been predefined in the previous uh, tutorial. We're going to go ahead and make it selectable. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hit view and I'm going to go to align view, align active camera to view. What we're going to do now is we're going to add a constraint to the camera. So as you can see, we have our camera selected. Make sure you've got it right here. And we're going to go to our constraints, add object constraint, tracking, track two. And this is where our little uh, camera target thing comes into play. So, I mean, if we go to target right now, I mean, it will bring up several objects. What you want to do is locate camera target or whatever you named the little the little crosshairs thing that we put on our, um, it's, it's listed as an empty. I'm not sure that's not really the best word for it, but either way, it's what we renamed camera target at the beginning of the tutorial. If you need to just skip back and look and then come back to here. So we're going to select camera target. As you see, it automatically snaps to the shuttle. And so when we hit spacebar to animate, the camera tracks the shuttle and follows it to the space station. Pretty sweet, huh? Now let's see, let's hit spacebar, stop right here. Um, I want to go ahead and hit, let's look down the Z axis and we're going to move the camera just a little bit closer. And let's see, let's snap back to our camera view. Looking good. Let's see our camera. Let's change the focal length to 20 millimeter. And then we're just going to go look down the Z axis uh, with our camera selected, hit G, just move it a little bit closer, look down our X axis, move it again, hit it holding G and just kind of dragging it kind of freely. All right. So we got a nice close up view of our shuttle. Let's see what happens. We kind of drag down the timeline and let's go ahead and go to our render preview. Okay, so we want to kind of reposition the camera a little bit. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, we first, our camera is set to uh, 20 millimeters. Um, we're going to click Z to look down our Z axis. We're going to hit G to just kind of freely move our camera. Um, let's go ahead and go to our wireframe just so we can see the fly path a bit more. Get really close here, X axis. All right, it's kind of right there along the flight path. Um, let's go back to our camera view turn on preview mode. As you can see, the camera follows the shuttle and it makes a really close flyby of the camera. Do that again, see how we're looking. Let's just go ahead and click the shuttle and uh, let's see, let's go to our orientation, change to normals and hit R and then Y. And let's just kind of snap our shuttle along the Y axis a bit. So we get a nice little detailed shot and of the shuttles that's going by. Pretty cool. And you, know, you guys can fine tune this however you want. Um, like some of the things I did was I uh, keyframed it to where the shuttle, when it's here, um, I hit, you know, hit I, rotate, um, keyframe the rotation basically. And then 
as it's getting up to the space station, let's just kind of zoom in. Let's see, look down the z-axis. Forgot how how zoomed in. Zoom, I forgot how zoomed out we were. Um, okay, so we're looking over the space station here. Let's just kind of rotate out a bit. Um, bring our slider back a bit. So, okay, so we got our shuttle right here. If we wanted to rotate it along the y-axis, and then hit I, rotation, and just bring these frames, or these keyframes, all the way up to 250. So now if we go back to our camera, as you can see here, as it flies by, it starts to kind of right itself and uh, to align with the space station. And there's there's all kinds of things we can do. I mean, um, as, you know, the uh, space station is obviously inspired by uh, 2001: Space Odyssey. So I mean, you know, we can select the space station and um, make sure that uh, let's uh, just start here at uh, frame 250, and uh, we're already set to normals for our orientation. So let's add a little rotation to the space station as well. So let's hit, let's hit I, rotation, and let's see. Let's just Right click to, or I'm sorry, third mouse to ro uh, just kind of rotate freely. Um, go to frame zero and let's hit R to rotate, Z axis. Rotate a little bit, hit I, rotation. And so as you can see, the, ro the space station just has a nice little bit of rotation to it. All right, so if we check out the entire animation, start at frame zero. Shuttle flies by. There you go. Anyways, guys, I hope you're enjoying these tutorials. I've had a lot of fun making them, and I believe this makes uh, number 10 as far as my tutorials go. Um, be sure to hit like and subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I post a tutorial because I've got plenty more coming. Uh, I've got some ideas in the mix right now and um, I'm excited to be putting these together. So, um, so yeah, hope you guys are enjoying these and I'll see you in the next one.